Welcome to DHN. I'm your host, Wade Teamer. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend, guys. I took a couple days to rest, and I hope you guys did the same. Rest is important, very important to keeping your mind strong and your body strong as we progress through this new age of digital assets, ladies and gentlemen. In this episode, we have a lot of things to discuss, guys. We're going to answer a very some very important questions okay very important questions like the one you see before you will the world's central bank digital currency be based on the xrp ledger also what can we look forward to with these coming ripple announcements well i did some digging and i may have an answer guys i'm telling you it's going to be big also we're going to be talking about xdc because they have some cool slides from a recent trade tokenization event it's centered around the launch of the trata token and guys there are some very interesting participants that were in attendance at this conference guys we're going to break it all down because not only that but there is a trade initiative being formed right now between the united states and indo specific uh indo pacific i always get that wrong countries guys and we're going to break it all down in this video and then also we have some big news when it comes to Stellar Lumens, guys. One of their biggest partners has acquired a game-changing license from the Nigerian Central Bank. All of these things we are going to cover in today's episode, guys. If you find value, of course, you know what to do. Hit that like, leave a comment, share this video so that way more people get this info. And let's just jump right into it, guys. Now, let's start with this Flutter Wave game-changing license, guys. This is big. So, pretty much what we have here is Fintech Unicorn Flutter Wave has been granted a license from the Nigerian Central Bank. And what this license will allow them to do is to connect every single store of value in Nigeria with global commerce, guys. Let's get some details on the statement that was released by the Central Bank of Nigeria. Pretty much, Flutterwave has been granted a switching and processing license by the Central Bank of Nigeria. A statement released by the payments firm said the new license allows Flutterwave to facilitate transactions between financial service providers, merchants, customers, and other stakeholders. Guys, there's that key word right there again. Financial service providers, I told you guys, those would be the important ones. But this gets deeper. Just give me a moment. But before receiving the switching and processing license, Flutterwave operated in Nigeria using two licenses, payment service solutions provider and international money transfer operator. While the licenses made it possible for Flutterwave to operate in Nigeria legally, according to the fintech firm, their use meant the payments firm had to work with several intermediaries. The involvement of such intermediaries in turn meant the processing and confirmations of transactions were cumbersome now thanks to this alliance um oh, excuse me now thanks to this license guys they no longer have to deal with that now what's so big about this is that this switching and processing license is cbn's most desirable central bank of nigeria's most desirable payment license because it embeds the licensee at the core the core, ladies and gentlemen, of Nigeria's financial ecosystem. This comes with rigorous and tough checks across every single part of business. Now, why is this so big when it comes to Stellar Lumens, guys? Well, for that, we had to go back in time a little bit because if you did not know, Flutter Wave and Stellar Lumens came together in October of last year to enable a new European African payment corridor built on Stellar Lumens, guys. This is big. So, in collaboration with Tempo, which is one of another Stellar partner, they launched two new remittance corridors between Europe and Africa on the Stellar Network. Working with Tempo, Flutterwave is now leveraging the Stellar Network and Stellar USDC to simplify remittances in Africa, guys. Now, the details here, this is just going to reinforce the previous story. But what I want you to take away from this is the fact that Stellar Lumens 
has achieved a very prominent position through Flutterwave, Tempo, and the Central Bank of Nigeria, guys. But let's just get a few more details from Stellar Development themselves. They state that opening these new corridors will greatly benefit businesses, focus on building more efficient, cost-effective remittance services, contributing to a stronger, more inclusive pan-African digital payments infrastructure flutterwave plans to extend stellar based cap uh, capabilities to additional african countries as it grows to the number of currencies it supports so guys i am still in the process i am not even gonna lie to you i'm gonna admit something uh to the diamond hustle members the africa project there was a very very bad technical error some something went wrong with the files guys i was literally 78% done with that video, but hey, computers, right? But nevertheless, that report is still coming out, guys. And as a matter of fact, now I believe I can add more to it because ever since I started digging, more and more things have come out. And definitely, Stellar Lumens has made that list. It was definitely on the top of the list of the cryptocurrencies. I had a full list of crypto projects that are dominating Africa. Bear with me, that report will come. But what's important here, guys, is again, Stellar Lumen's position in Nigeria, okay? And when it comes to what's going on with the instant payment systems, guys, I have an article too that we're gonna take a, let's just take a quick look at this. But this is coming from the pay Purs. I like how they write that though, but basically the adoption of real-time payments in the Americas. This report was released on August 23rd and what it details is the real-time payments market here in the United States, Latin America, and other places in the world, including Africa, guys. And I'll put the link down to this entire article in the episode guide, of course, but one of the key things that I pulled away from it is this section here it's the smallest section on the report but it asks the question what will be the casualties who will get who will go extinct because of this trend and the first thing that they mention are credit cards that's very interesting guys because it usually takes 48 hours to 72 hours for a credit card transaction to be settled however once we kick on this instant payment system yeah, things are going to change dramatically, guys. Again, this whole report will be uh, down in the description. I would highly advise to check it out. It's a great read, great information on that for sure. Now, let's jump over and talk XDC Network, guys, and get into this trade finance situation. Some interesting things have been brewing. So, earlier in the week, the XDC Foundation uh, was a part of the IFTA, International Trade Finance Summit, uh, in Portugal this year, guys. And there, what this was centered around the Trata token launch with Trade Tech and the TFD, TFD initiative, excuse me. And I couldn't find any visuals, like any video or anything like that. But what XDC did post on their Twitter is just as interesting, guys. So here's a look at the participants that were at the event with the release of the Trata token, guys, with the initial introduction. And we can see we got a couple big names here. We got the Citibank, of course, Trade Tech, XDC, Trax Pay, Moneta Go. I've heard of them in uh, other places in the world. But what's interesting is this accelerated payments, okay? Accelerated payments company. So you can already tell by the name what they're really interested in. But it's the next slide, guys, that I find to be just so, oh, so intriguing. So starting from the top and working our way down, major market transformations are underway. XDC is looking at new client expectations. They're looking to meet ESG goals and recruit institutional investors in order to bring about the age of tokenization. And this is going to include data management tokenization, tokenization and artificial intelligence, workflow, digitization platforms, and of course, the distributed ledger technology. But here's the exciting part guys this event was supported and evolving was supported by evolving regulatory frameworks and stakeholders including the world economic forum the icc digital standards initiative the world trade organization the united nations and the g7 
as well as the European Commission. We'll get to them in a second. But the G7, guys, and the World Economic Forum. It's just so interesting to see that right there in our faces. Okay, we already know World Economic Forum is the cream of the crop when it comes to this entire digital transformation. And they're very close with XDC. So if people ask, guys, hey, here's the the the, the pudding proof or however that goes. But it gets deeper, guys, because as I was looking at this tweet. You know how the internet works. You put in one keyword and the internet tends to send you other things associated with that keyword. And wouldn't you know it, guys, the United States is holding a closed door meeting. This is closed door meeting with 13 Indo-Pacific uh, Pacific countries. On Friday, they agreed to certain parameters to negotiate closer trade environment and economic ties with the United States, guys. But what's interesting about this agreement, and you know I went and found it, but they are focusing on certain areas of global trade, right? So they've broken it down into what? Pillar one, two, three, and four okay so we have four pillars of this negotiation now again this is something else that was that's not in the mainstream there's no video evidence of this guys but it's still important because this is an event that indicates that change is on the way and with the coming of instant payments guys it's going to revolutionize trade finance as well so this is so interesting because the United States, as well as these other uh, 13 nations, they are looking to approach the global trade in a brand new way. So one of the things that they really want to focus on is the incorporation of digital asset technology, guys. The first pillar indicates that the IPEF partners will seek high standard provisions in areas that are foundational to resilient, sustainable, and inclusive economic growth, including labor, environment, and the digital economy. Inclu uh, this also includes agriculture, transparency, good regulatory practices, competition, inclusivity, trade facilitation, so forth and so on, guys. Now, what they seek to do is provide high standard provisions that will benefit workers and ensure free trade that contributes to promoting, again, sustainable and inclusive economic growth. So this is going to change the trajectory of the trade finance when it comes from the United States. But the second pillar is very interesting as well is because it focuses on the supply chain. Now, they are going to incorporate digital infrastructure guys this is the basically the discussions that are being had right now at this summit and i believe it took place over this weekend but the discussions around uh facilitating trade using digital infrastructure it also applies to the supply chain and their use of digital infrastructures guys so this all leads into and of course pillar three you can see here the clean energy pillar we already know where that's coming from and then the fair economy pillar which basically talks about leveling the playing field okay that's so many things guys if you haven't had a chance to check out my uh fed now instant payments video we went over a chart in that video guys and it talks about everything that we are seeing right now it's so crazy. I, again, I have to shout out Crypto Slayer and the brother who put together that uh, whiteboard initially because they saw what was coming, guys. They really saw what was coming. Now, this can kind of tie us into uh, one of our institutional adoption stories. OK, we're going to jump over to Europe. All right. The European Union has presented a project to fight counterfeiting by using NFTs, and they look to do this by 2023 guys now what's interesting about this is that this is all coming after the mica regulation okay and if you don't know mica is essentially the regulatory movement in the uh, european union and they 
they are at the point of finalizing their decisions and with that they have been promoting more and more blockchain and dlt developments guys so the details are as follows the european union is working on a project that involves blockchain architecture and the use of non-fungible tokens to fight counterfeiting and forgery the product is uh the project is the product of several meetings and blockchain hackathons organized by the european union's intellectual property office and proposes to create digital twins of products to trace their paths across supply lines now i initially discovered this story uh through a v chain thread okay very interesting through a v chain thread and once we go over the details it really starts to make sense guys because they released a document uh the european union's intellectual property office they've been working on this for the better part of four years that's the crazy part guys but what they look to achieve through blockchain is ip intellectual property holders will be able to create digital tokens or twin nfts to prove that a group of produced goods are authentic these ip holders will have to be previously included as approved signatories to create these products and attract uh, them on the blockchain the solution will then allow for supply chain tracking as the products are transported through different checkpoints allowing ip holders to be certain that the products that reach stores are authentic now we've been discussing a lot about um ip protection as a matter of fact on that whiteboard once again guys we knew that ips and nfts are going to usher in a brand new era for this business and what they look to do is pretty much guys the thing here especially if if you want this information to be bullish towards v chain well we have to talk about what v chain technology specializes in that's creation of nfts to verify identity on a supply chain okay v chain just moved over to san marino which puts them in the european union so now there are other tokens of course in that area and then we can't forget about origin trail and it's funny because i was looking at origin trails github they're looking to develop a stable coin guys so with the instant payments networks coming into play all around the world and supply chain now being uh pushed up into the focus the global discussion the supply chain tokens are coming up with payment uh applications in order to incorporate with the environment right iotx as a matter of fact they have just unleashed iot pay and if you know a little bit about iotx they focus on the machine to machine economy iot connected devices now those devices will be able to transact with each other okay again it all falls under the guise of this new instant payment system that we are surely going to have by the end of 2023 guys now this of course too will be down in the episode guide but this is from the world intellectual property organization over in europe and you can see guys uh point number two in its contribution the european union explores how blockchain technologies can help fight counterfeiting and uh its detrimental societal impact describing how the european union's property uh intellectual property office has joined efforts with the tech community on developing a blockchain solution for product authentication to support enforcement authorities this has been going on through the progress of the anti-counterfeiting blockathon infrastructure project which is a high level design architecture to develop the blockchain solution and a roadmap for adoption was implemented and established this is also interesting because it's a collaboration with Tencent guys okay Tencent yes it's coming from the Asian region but Tencent has a global reach this is one of the groups that is helping pushing pushing it in the direction of new technologies okay so this is going to be big I couldn't find anything where it directly explicitly stated that V chain was being used but guys there is only a select amount of tokens that could pull this off that is currently working in that area so again very big things going on in the world 
of cryptocurrency guys but let's jump into our last story guys before we land the plane here and try to answer some very important questions about what ripple and xrp are going to be doing with central bank digital currency so i believe i know what some of those announcements are going to consist of over the next couple of weeks guys that's been the recent story coming out from ripple they made the announcement ever since they were included it was publicly known because they were included in this digital dollar project at the beginning of the year guys that's one thing that a lot of people have overlooked but what I believe is going to come from this announcement guys has something to do with uh the ripple cbdc innovate challenge that started a few months ago okay and when you look at some of the products that were being showcased in this contest there are two that i think we are going to get announcements from the first one is intel central guys this is an exchange platform for cbdc's to exchange safely with with the xrp ledger as a medium for exchange guys now this is very interesting because and now of course link down will be in the episode guys so you can take a look at all these projects but you'll notice that not all of them have this section completed basically what it does so this pulled me in even deeper now this particular application guys intel central will allow traction transactions on the cbdc private ledgers will be verified by the same consensus protocol used by the xrp ledger the cbdc private ledger will be supported by RippleNet technologies the private xrp is based on the public xrp but is entirely private so Pretty much, it'll be running on the public XRP ledger with the private XRP ledger functionalities, guys. That's going to give it enhanced security. It's also going to give it that privacy layer as well as that speed, that same speed layer for the public side on the private side. And another thing, too, I believe that the private all of the private transactions they'll be wholesale okay because never forget the cbdc's are going to come in two forms they're going to be wholesale for banks financial institutions so forth and so on and then for retail okay so and there are a couple of retail applications retail cbdc focused applications coming out of this uh summit here but the xrp will be a bridge for different cbdc transactions on the private register and central bank transactions on the public register guys just reconfirming what we just said and it will also allow users to open xrp accounts and send funds users can create a trust line okay that's talking about digital credit here and i know credit is digital but in the age that we're in i needed to clarify it in that form because it'll be a new form of credit and then also this application will allow people to mint and burn cbdc's on the xrp ledger as well as transfer them now the term minting a cbdc implies an nft okay so what did we just go over with the european union as well as the uh, us and their indo-pacific trade finance uh, alliance here they're looking to incorporate digital technology they're looking to use nfts to verify data pretty much guys now here's another one that i think we're going to hear something about is the crypto iso 20022 interop okay enables interoperability between iso formats and xrp ledger payments guys this is massive because this is addressing the the portion of the iso payments that i was trying to highlight to people as being the most crucial piece as to why cryptos will be important the select cryptos right this application is going to allow the current uh the new iso messaging format it's going it's this is an application that's really going to be similar to impel and xdc's application for bringing iso messaging to bitcoin okay this is going to allow for that same thing to happen from any chain 
All right, this is going to be the application that really embeds the XRP ledger into traditional finance, guys. Let's dig in and see what it does. Crypto ISO 2022 Interop enables interoperability between ISO file formats and crypto payments. It aims to facilitate sending and processing uh, received crypto payments within existing financial software of ISO capabilities. Now, another thing to keep in mind too is that once the ISO migration starts, there will still be financial institutions using the previous iteration of it. OK, that uh, those two lines will run parallel until the final deadline in 2025, guys. So this app is going to allow the XRP ledger to be compatible with the new ISO messaging as well as the current ISO messaging. This is massive now. Let's continue here. It says, as a payee, you can fetch received crypto payments from your wallet and transform received payments into the CAM T.054 XML format. Again, it all goes back to those codes, guys. The ability for a crypto project to interpret those codes, it's what's going to make them ISO compliant, guys. And you can see here, they have it available for USD payments as well as Euro payments. And we know that XRP has been very, very closely tied with the European Union and their digital dollar project. So again, that's why I think that between crypto ISO uh, interop that's what i'm going to call it and intel central these are the applications that i believe that they're that we're going to get announcements for now when it comes to when those announcements are going to come guys the dates we have to look forward to okay because this week was the final week of the uh entrance okay basically this is the last week that entrance can get all their information in but the official conclusion of this project takes place on november 11th okay so we're going to get an announcement either sometime before the end of this month that they have selected either one of these applications here guys let me just go back real quick yeah so i think we're going to get an announcement that either intel central or the crypto iso interop is going to be going live on the xrp ledger and it would be fitting it would be fitting because again what do we have coming in november ladies and gentlemen all right what do we have coming next may these instant payment platforms so all in all i think it has been a big week for the crypto space it's been a big week for xrp and the payments uh tokens guys so like i said our focus is going to be all these payment coins because we know this is the very next phase of adoption with all that being said though that's all i got for you in this episode again if you found value you know what to do hit that like subscribe share this video leave a comment down below are you holding xrp are you holding xlm are you holding xdc are you a part of the x-men I'm sorry, I got excited there, but uh, you know what I want you to do. Hit the links down in the description. If you haven't had a chance yet, pick up your DHN crypto journal. There's a lot of more uh, payment coins that we need to talk about, that we need to learn about because the X coins, okay, they're going to lead us into this transition. But once we get in the transition and everything is flowing, there's going to be other payment coins like Request Network, ACH, or Alchemy Pay, all right? As well as we can't forget about tokens like Digibyte and Litecoin, guys. The payments landscape is about to change. So with all that being said, you know what I want you to do. Have a great day. Have a prosperous day. And most importantly, if the money is digital, so is the hustle. I'll see y'all in the next episode.